Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 34 of C programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, we're going to be continuing with our linked lists and we're going to be actually understanding how we create the memory. So there might be a few more tutorials to come, but um, bear with me, there's just a lot to learn and um, not enough time in these tutorials. So to continue on here, uh, this uh, if you haven't watched the previous lesson, that's how we got to this part right here. So go watch that if you haven't already. And this right here is just a function that I made which removes the returns from our fgets. So we've, we already know that fgets, um, it saves the backslash n on when we take in uh, characters. So this is just a function to remove that uh, backslash n when we're done with it. Uh, you guys should already know that. Um, if you haven't, just check out a previous tutorial on fgets, and it's probably explained in there. So anyway, actually continuing with linked lists now, um, we've created three pointers, and uh, what we know so far is that we haven't actually created any memory to store the information that's inside these structs. All we have is pointers to point to one, but we haven't actually created them yet. So what we know is all these pointers are equal to null, or they should be anyway. So uh, to start out, we have to do something with head. Our head pointer is going to get the value of null. And uh, the others we can leave because they're going to change, but head, we have to explicitly say it's null because we have to do a check with it later. Uh, basically, just start out with this, and then you'll understand why I put it in later. And I'll, re I'll refer back to it. So anyway, um, to start out now, uh, this is the crucial part of where we start actually creating the memory. So in this tutorial we're going to be um, doing a for loop. So we're going to enter um, information a bunch of times through a loop. And there's different ways and more complicated ways to do linked lists, which I'll talk about later. But uh, we're trying to keep it simple. So uh, let's just start with the, our loop here. So we're going to create int i for our incrementer variable. And then we'll start in the for loop. i is going to get a value of 1 as long as i is less than or equal to 4 and i++. plus plus. So uh, basically this loop is going to go through four times. Now this is the very important part of creating the memory that we need to actually store our variables. And it's different than how we've done it in the past. So um, pay attention. Um, current pointer will get. Basically this is how the pointer, this is why linked lists are so ultra important and why pointers are so ultra important, ultra important in linked lists. So um, what we're doing with pointers is we point to memory that's allocated and we're pointing to a certain thing in memory. So we have to use a special function that will create our struct in memory for us and then it's going to return a pointer so that current pointer can take it. So this function is called malloc and basically it allocates memory for whatever we need. So uh, this is by the way in the standard library.h header so uh, that's important to have when you're doing this or else it won't work. So um, here we have uh, malloc and as you can see the parameter has some interesting thing called size t and basically that's um, memory. So it's the size of or a block of memory that it has to create. So it has to understand how large of a space it has to create for our struct. So there's another function called size of which will get the size of whatever we need and it, its return it will return the size of that malloc can use. So in size of we have to figure out the size of our struct. So we're going to use struct person and that's how that works. So uh, size of will get the struct person. Size of will return in size t format what um, basically the size that it needs to allocate. So then malloc will take that size and it will allocate the space for uh, struct person. And when that space is created, it will uh, basically it will create that space and it will it will return the address of uh, struct person or the, the memory that we created. 
and that address will be passed on to the current pointer. So current pointer will now know where the struct person is created in memory. So yeah, it seems like an, a really complicated thing, but it's really not that complicated. Um, basically, it creates the memory for us, it gives us the address, and the pointer will save the address. And then we can change anything that's inside the struct. So yeah, that's the cool part about linked lists, and it's um, probably one of the most important things in it. Um, so anyway, now that we've saved or re retrieved the address of where the struct is located, we can change any value inside of it. So now we use current pointer and a new operator, which looks like an awesome arrow in um, old school arrow style. Um, basically, what this means is a current pointer has the address of the struct. So this arrow pointer type operator will point to the elements inside the struct that it holds. So on the left side of the operator is the struct pointer, and on the right side it's all the elements inside of the struct. So that means that current pointer currently has all these things that are inside the struct person. So it can it can change the num, the name, and use the next pointer when it needs to. So basically, our current pointer, we want to change the num value, and we want to give it the value of i. So num will have the value of i, and this will change every time we go through the loop. It's just a way to identify what um, what loop number I guess we're on. So now the next part is changing the name inside the um, inside of our pointer or our struct person. So now we use fgets and we do the same thing that we did above except we use name and then as we've done before we use kmax length because that's the maximum thing we can hold and then standard input for um, yeah, we've used that for everything so far. So uh, now we, uh, like I said before, we have our remove return function, which I'm going to use here just to get rid of the backslash n. It's just proper styling, I guess. So remove return, and we want to pass on current pointer and name. There you go. So that's how we've just, we've, um, initialized all the values that are inside of our struct. So this is about as far as I'm going to get with this uh, tutorial and I'm going to continue with the next one but uh, just to review everything that we've done in this because this is um, it's a hard topic and um, there's a lot of information so understanding it bit by bit is uh, crucially important. So to start out we created all three of these pointers which point to different slots of memory that we create later. The head pointer is going to get the value of null just because it isn't pointing to anything right now and the other ones are changed before we have to look at them so uh, this is just an important step which I'll talk about in the next tutorial. Um, so to continue on further with that um, we've created a for loop which will go through and will create four different instances of struct person uh, because it's going to go through it four times but um, what's the most important part of this entire thing I'd say is this part right here because again size of will get the size of the struct person in terms of bytes it will return the those the bytes information basically to malloc which will allocate enough space for the struct person and then it returns the address of the struct person and it gives that address to the current pointer. So the current pointer is now pointing to that struct person and we can change every value that it points to with the operator right here. And so we have a pointer that points to a struct and the, the operator will point to elements inside of the struct that it holds. So that's pretty much um, all the, inf the important information in this tutorial. And the next tutorial will be coming up, and it's how we start organizing the lists a little bit.